Hi everyone, it's Kathy, and I am back to share with you the other three cards that I created using the chicken pack. I had asked in my previous video if you all wanted to see it, and many of you did. So here we go, and I'm going to jump right into it. I started out with one of the pieces of red cardstock that came with the kit. I treated it with my anti-static powder bag so that I could do some embossing. I used the large chicken wire background stamp and inked that up with Versamark ink, stamped it down onto the red panel, and then coated it with detail white embossing powder, tapped off the excess powder, and then just heat set that with my heat gun. After that was done, I set it aside and I started to work on the little chicken who is sitting in the nest. I used Memento Tuxedo Black ink to stamp the image onto a piece of Cougar Super Smooth cardstock. And I did use the stamp in two of the cards. I did it in this one, obviously, and then the last card that I share with you. So I'm only going to show how I colored this image once because I did the exact same thing and used the exact same colors. So for the chicken, like I did in the previous video, which if you haven't had a chance to see that, I'll make sure to link to that video at the end of this video. I started out with C3 and just added in the shadows where they would be particularly around her wings that are resting up against her tummy and the backside of her head and then underneath her beak. I blended that out with C1 and then did a quick, quick swipe with my colorless blender just to blend out some of the harsher lines. For the what are those things called? Is it a crest or a comb, a crown, whatever the red thing is on top of her head? I did very simple coloring for that because it's a very small image, uh, image, a very small area. So I just used two red markers for that. And then I used two yellow markers for her beak. For the nest, I started out with YR27. And the first thing I did was I added a shadow underneath her body. Then I literally just kind of swiped over the straw that is drawn in for me, making sure to leave quite a bit of white space. And then I came in with YR24 and added more of those little flick marks, still leaving a little bit of white space. And then I blended that out with YR21. Next, it was time to put the card together. I cut a strip of the white wood grain patterned paper and adhered that with my tape runner down the center of the embossed background. I did cut two really thin slivers of black cardstock and adhered those with liquid glue and made sure to have them butt right up next to that shiplap paper. And I know that there's pieces hanging off all over the place, but the reason that I put it together this way is I wanted to run it through my Gemini Junior with a wonky stitched rectangle die and I wanted to have the stitching go all the way around. So that's why I adhered everything together first and then ran it through my die cut machine. I adhered that background to a piece of black cardstock and I just made sure to have a really small little black border all the way around and I trimmed off the excess with my paper trimmer. Next, I adhered that to the front of my note card and I had run the chicken through my die cut machine with a circle die and then I had run a piece of black cardstock through my die cut machine with a scalloped circle die. I adhered the chicken to the black scallop circle and then I used some foam tape to pop that image up on the front of the card. For the sentiment, I stamped it onto a piece of black cardstock with Versamark ink and heat embossed it with white embossing powder. I ran the sentiment through my die cutting machine with a fishtail banner, added a little bit of foam tape to that, and added it to the front of the card, and that finishes up card number four. Moving on to card number five, there is quite a bit of coloring on the party coop, and I did want to leave the coloring for this in, um, just to show you how I added in the shadows, but I am going to have it sped up pretty quickly. I started out with R27, and added that color in the areas where there would naturally be shadows. So underneath the roof line, around the window and the door, and then I did a little bit of a flicking motion at the top of the stand of the, I don't know if those are legs or stands of a chicken coop. Anyway, 
I did a little bit of shading at the very top and at the very bottom. After I added in those shadows, and this is not my darkest color, by the way, but after I added in those shadows, I started to do a flicking motion, and I did the flicking motion from the top down and the bottom up. And I didn't compl completely fill in each of the planks on the chicken coop. I made sure to leave white space in between each of the flicking sections just to make sure that I could have some variation in color and then um, I also try to maintain a highlight. So I am leaving quite a bit of white space. Next I come in with R24 and I start blending it out. And again, I'm doing the flicking motions from the top down and from the bottom up. And I'm not being very careful about having my flick lines be even because I do want it to have kind of a weathered look. Next I came in with R17 and did really quick swipes just to fill in most of the white spaces that I left for that highlight. And again, I'm not trying to be perfect. I want it to look kind of weathered and worn. Then I decided that I needed more contrast, especially on the part of the chicken coop that is going back away from us. So I brought in a scary dark color, which is how Courtney Creeper refers to it and used R59 and added a little bit of shading underneath the roof and then along the bottom on the part that is furthest away. And then to really emphasize that corner where the front of the chicken coop goes to the back, I did add a line right down that side there. Again, I'm not trying to keep my lines very straight or perfect, and I'm doing some very light flicking motions just to really deepen up some of those shadows. After I deepen up all of those shadows, I go ahead and I blend everything out with R27. And this is where I finally fill in those leftover white spaces. For the roof of the chicken coop, I started out with C5 and I really wanted to accentuate the corners. So when I added the C5 in, I did a tiny little bit at the very back of the chicken coop and a little bit on the back side right behind that corner. And then I added more of the C5 on the front corners of the chicken coop. I blended that out with C3, leaving a pretty good center highlight, and then I finished the blending with C1. To color in the ramp, I started with E31, just to kind of give myself a little bit of a guide of where I was gonna go with that. So I was really very light-handed, added some flicking motions from the bottom up and from the top down, and I did go around the edge um, just to try and add a little bit of a wood grain texture to the wood. And then I came in with E37 or 39. If, I'll make sure to have the colors listed down below um, to darken up the outer edge of the ramp as well as the, the planks that are going up the ramp. I just added a shadow above and below each of those planks with the E37 or 39, whichever it is. And I blended that out a little bit with the E35. And then I filled in the rest of the white space with E34, which of course blended out my E37. So I did come back in with the E37 just to reinforce the shadows around the planks that are like the steps going up the ramp. For the frame around the window and then the inside frame around the door, I just used C3 and C1. Again, very simple coloring. Since I used the cool gray markers to color in the window frame and door frame, when I went to color in the chickens, I switched over to warm grays just so that they would be a different color than the frames. And it's a warmer tone, so since they're inside the chicken coop, the shadows would be a little bit deeper and a little bit darker. So to color in the chickens, and I use that term very loosely because really all I did was I used W4 to add in the darkest areas. So at the bottom of their neck, where they're peeking out from the window or the door, and then if there was a chicken behind another chicken, I would use the W4 to add a shadow on the chicken that's in the back. And then I did a quick swipe with my W1 just to soften out the W4 
because it did leave a pretty harsh line. And to color in the crowns and the beaks on these chickens, because they are so small, I only used one marker for that. To color the inside of the chicken coop behind the chickens, I used a couple of different E40 markers and was really careful not to get too close to their little crest or crown or whatever the red things are on top of their heads to make sure that it didn't end up bleeding out all over the place. For the background, I did very simple ink blending on a piece of Nina Classic Crest cardstock. I started out with scattered straw and just did pretty quick swipes with a makeup blending brush. Then I took brushed corduroy and I just tapped the bristles of the brush directly over the scattered straw. Then I cleaned off my brush and with whatever ink was left over on my brush, I blended out the scattered straw and brushed corduroy. I die cut a piece of green card stock with a grassy edge die and here I'm just kind of lining it up to see how much more ink I needed to add and I did end up adding in more scattered straw for that. For the sky, I used tumbled glass distress oxide ink with a cloud stencil from My Favorite Things. After I was done with the ink blending, I trimmed the panel down to four by five and a quarter, and I adhered that to the top of a piece of red card stock that came with the kit. And then I just used my paper trimmer to trim off the excess. Next, I adhered that to the front of a note card. And then I remembered that I wanted to have that little grassy border there. So I end up peeling the panel off the front of the card and adhering the grass border to the ink blended panel, which by the way, I did add a little bit of texture using the little chicken feed stamp with the brushed corduroy, just to add some more texture to the ground. And I did that off camera. So after I adhered the grass to the bottom of that panel, I just used my scissors to trim off the excess and then I put it back on the front of the card. To adhere the party coop, I did use a little bit of liquid glue on the stand or the legs of the chicken coop and then I used my tape runner to adhere the rest and then for the little chicken who is holding a balloon I wanted to have her up front so I did add some foam tape to the back of her as well as the balloon and adhered them to the front of the card and the little chicken who is holding the balloon I left the coloring out of this video um, just in the interest of time again I used all the same colors and then um, for the balloon string, I did hand draw that and I did run those images through my scan and cut machine to be cut out. Anyway, to finish up the card, I stamped a sentiment onto a piece of white card stock and ran it through my die cut machine with a fishtail banner die. I adhered that with glue to the front of the card and the final touch was to add a little bit of sparkle to the balloon with my Wink of Stella glitter pen and that finishes up card number five. Moving on to the final card. Uh, again, I'm not gonna show the coloring of the chicken sitting in the nest because I did that at the beginning of the video. But for my shaker card, which I love shaker cards, and lately I've been very much into using the smaller stamps in a stamp set for my shaker bits. So for my shaker bits for this card, I stamped the little egg using a very pale tan colored ink and I just stamped the egg, I don't know, 122 times maybe. And I ran those through my scan and cut machine to cut them out. Then I took the small little flower that's part of the stamp set and I stamped that in a brown ink and I colored it with one Copic marker. And I decided to add a couple of baby chicks to the card. So I stamped them onto a scrap of Cougar Super Smooth card stock. For the coloring of these little chicks, I did very simple coloring. I mean, one color for the chicks, one color for the beak, and one color for their crown, crest, whatever that thing is called. And I did have my scan and cut machine cut them out as well. I cut a piece of the patterned paper down and it's just barely under four and a quarter and I cut it at an angle. And I had also run that through my die cut machine with a circle die. I kind of played with the placement of how I wanted that patterned paper to sit on top of the bottom of the card and taped down a piece of scratch paper at an angle so I could stamp the bottom of the card with the smaller chicken wire stamp. And for that, I used Versify and Claire Morning Mist ink. I wasn't trying to get that stamp lined up perfectly. I just wanted to have a little bit of a pattern on the bottom of the card. So after I had that stamped out and I placed my brown piece of cardstock on top to make sure that it was 
going to be where I wanted it to be. I used liquid glue to adhere a piece of acetate on the back side of the patterned paper for my shaker window. Next, I used my sticky foam strips to create the well for my little shaker bits. And the sticky foam strips are really flexible and pliable, but I found that it's easiest to remove the backing paper before trying to make them curve around a circle. You want to get your adhesive as close to the window opening as possible and make sure that your your foam tape has really good contacts so that your shaker bits don't fall out. Once I had the sticky foam strips around the window for my shaker bits, I used quarter inch foam tape around the rest of the back side of that panel. And the one thing that I found with the sticky foam strips and this particular foam tape from scrapbook.com is that it's the same thickness. I noticed that my regular Scotch foam tape isn't as thick as the sticky foam strips, so I would usually have to double that up. Anyway, after I had the back of that panel completely coated with foam tape, I started to add in my little shaker bits. Now, if you're going to be using stamped and colored images for your shaker bits, you do wanna make sure that you put them in face down so that when you flip your card over, the correct side is facing up. After I had my little shaker bits added into the window, I decided to add some of those itty bitty teeny tiny micro 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 glass beads. I removed the release paper from the rest of the foam tape and then I added another piece of acetate behind my shaker window. I like to do this because that way I don't end up losing any of my shaker bits when I go to put my card together. Anyway, after I added the extra piece of acetate, I put some liquid glue on the foam tape around the edges and then picked up my stamped panel and lined it up and pressed it into place. And the reason that I put the liquid glue on the foam tape is just in case I needed to have a little bit of wiggle room so I could move it around if I didn't get it lined up perfectly straight. I used liquid glue to adhere my shaker panel to the front of a note card and I used liquid glue to adhere the chicken and the little chicks. And then I remembered that I had die cut a white frame to go around my shaker window and I forgot to adhere it in place. But I was not going to give up and I really wanted to have that frame. So I just used my scissors and I cut it apart and kind of tucked the frame in and around the little chicken images. And that finishes up my final card using the chicken pack. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.